Hello, this is Reza Rad from Redicad. In this video, I'm going to talk about the default semantic model in Power BI, the one that automatically creates when you create a lake house or warehouse in Microsoft Fabric, or the custom uh, semantic model when you create it, what are the differences, which one you should use. Let's go and check it out. Okay, to talk about the semantic models, uh, let's look at this environment. So here I'm in my fabric environment. I have a lake house already built. If you want to learn more about lake house, I have a separate video about it or warehouse. Uh, they are kind of the same with some um, differences which you can choose one over the other. I have a separate video talking about those. But at the moment, consider lake house or warehouse both as uh, storage options like a database that you can have your data in it persisted. Uh, that lake house or warehouse usually comes with a SQL analytics endpoint, which is where you can actually go and uh, connect to that data, write some queries from uh, SQL Server Management Studio or things like that. It also always comes comes with a semantic model. This is what we call as a default semantic model or a Power BI dataset. Uh, so it is always included in the lake house or warehouse when you create it. Um, to see it or to go to the editor experience of that, usually you can go to the lake house explorer itself. This is uh, what we call the lake house explorer. When you click on the lake house, this is the place that you see the tables, files, everything. From here, you would have the option to switch to the SQL analytics endpoint. Uh, when I go to the SQL analytics endpoint, this would be the place that I see the actual um, tables. I can query the data in here, uh, but there is also a model tab. Uh, as I said, I'm not focusing on the lake house in this uh, video. I'm focusing on the SQL analytics uh, on the semantic model of it. Uh, in the model tab, this would be the place that you actually go and uh, manage your semantic model. The first time it has to be be provisioned. When you provision it, you would have your tables in here. It also always have some of the dynamic management views, which is automatically part of the model. These are useful views to give you some um, information about how many queries are running, the historical execution of those. It's good for monitoring uh, some of your um, um, like warehouse or lake house performance. But the actual tables, you would have them. You can create a relationship between them. Uh, the relationship editor is there. This this is the place that you can even add multiple uh, tabs or diagrams pages. Uh, you can click on a table, create new measures in it as well. Uh, the thing, however, is that here the experience is uh, still limited. So you cannot do everything you want. Like, for example, if I want to create a DAX calculated table, I cannot do that. I can go to column and do some column level formatting, like hiding the column, things like that. But if I want to go ahead and uh, for example, create a hierarchy. I cannot create a hierarchy in here. Uh, or if I want to create a calculation group, or if I want to go and um, set up a role level security, things like that are not easily possible in here. This is what we call default semantic model. Now, if you go and create a semantic model yourself, that would be a custom semantic model. How do you create that? To create a custom semantic model, you can go to the data tab uh, down below there. Let me just bring this page over here because you may not see that in the in the overall view. Um, so here it is. This is where you go and see the, uh, the data tab, the model tab. So the model tab would give you access to the default semantic model. But if you go to the data tab, under the data tab, I'll make it bigger again, under the data tab, then under the reporting tab, here is the place that you can actually go and build a new semantic model. This new semantic model would be um, using the same direct lake concept behind the scene. I'll make it a bit, a bit smaller. Uh, I can create the semantic model, let's say custom semantic model number two, let's call it that. Uh, and then I can choose as many as tables I want. I can choose where in which workspace I want this to be stored. So this can go to actually another workspace. And that is also one of the benefits of the, uh, of setting it up this way, because then you can set up the different levels of access in different workspaces uh, for your semantic model versus the actual um, lake house or warehouse. Anyway, so when I um, 
get this set up. This is initiating that semantic model and it will load a new editor experience for me, which is, um, which is the web model editor experience of Power BI. Uh, I would call it enhanced uh, model editor. That's not the actual name of it. I'm calling it this because, uh, because the experience you would have there is totally different from the experience when we are building the default semantic model. So this is the enhanced experience. As you see here, I have a much better UI to build my data model. I have the tables. I can still create relationships. Like for example, I can connect the, um, the order date key to the date key over here. Uh, it still gives me that relationship diagram design, everything that I had over there. It also gives me uh, some of the options that you see at the top here, such as creating a new table, creating a new calculation group, managing roles, which would bring the rollable security setup for me uh, and, and things like that. Like if I want to set up a um, like a hierarchy, I can go and set it up over here. This is the place that it would give me all those options. Like if you want to mark a table as a date table, things like that, which are usually quite important things in a actual model setup. Like for example, I'll connect customer key to customer key here as well, just so that I have a couple of more relationships. Uh, so this experience is far better than the experience that you have with the default semantic model. Uh, and any change you make here automatically will be saved. You don't need to save anything because this is the online editor. Uh, this can be then used to create a new report directly over here. If I want to create a new report from this model, or you can actually go to, uh, to your workspace. That would be the place that you have your semantic model. Like this is the custom semantic model we have created. Then I can go ahead and create new reports directly from there by using more options. I can say create report or auto create it or create paginated report. Any of these would give me the ability to create that report. Uh, the um, enhanced model view is only available with this custom one. Uh, as you see, when I click on that three dots, it also gives me that open data model feature, which will get me back over here. Whereas the default semantic model wouldn't give you that. So when I, when you click on that default semantic model, the open data model is grayed out. Open data model can be grayed out for some other reasons as well. I have a link down in the description in my blog, which goes back to the Microsoft page explaining why that open data model might be disabled. But one of those reasons is the default semantic model. Now there are other ways also to create that semantic model, but they are not necessarily going to create that um, same experience because the semantic model that we create, that custom semantic model uh, is actually a uh, is actually a direct lake semantic model. So when I go to these tables, when I hover on these, you see that there is like this is a striped blue bar. Uh, and when I hover on it, it shows that it is direct lake. Direct lake is a specific type of connection, which is kind of similar to import data. Uh, but also similar to direct query as well. This is where Power BI VertiPack engine will be looking at the Parquet file as part of the Delta Lake format uh, and then just reading it from there directly. Whenever your data gets updated, it automatically gets uh, updated in your semantic model and as well as in your reports when you are when you are having reports connected to that. So it's a perfect type of connection actually. Uh, this way when you create it, it creates that direct lake connection. So reports can be created directly from here from the semantic model or if you are in Power BI desktop, you can choose things such as, for example, get data from Power BI semantic model and then go and choose that semantic model. This would be a Power BI report with live connection to that semantic model. And uh, I would strongly suggest doing that because then you would uh, be able to create multiple reports connected to the same semantic model. Like if I go back to my uh, workspace here and look at one of these custom semantic models that I have created, you looking at the lineage of that, you would see that um, that custom semantic model, this one, is coming from a lake house, um, from SQL Analytics endpoint of a lake house. And then that semantic model itself is used in multiple reports. That is the way you want it to be set up to have that multi layered architecture environment so that you have your visualization layer, your semantic model layer, your warehouse or lake house 
layer setup. Now, there are other ways that you can create semantic model, but they are not necessarily doing it exactly like this way. Like, for example, if you go to Power BI Desktop and you say get data from one lake data hub, and then you go and choose lake house or warehouse, depending on which one uh, you have your data in, uh, then when you go and choose that lake house, uh, if you just click on connect, what is happening is that you are creating a Power BI report with no semantic model, with a Power BI report with live connection to the default semantic model, right? So that is what is happening there. If you click on the drop down and then say uh, connect, that is the same thing. But if you say connect to the SQL endpoint, then what is happening is that you are bypassing that uh, default semantic model. You are connecting to the actual database SQL endpoint of Lakehouse or Warehouse. Then you would have the option to choose uh, import or direct query, which none of them are actually similar to the direct lake. So creating semantic model from here wouldn't be uh, giving you the same experience. If you want to build that custom semantic model using direct lake option, then the way to do that would be exactly what I mentioned. Go to the lake house explorer, switch then to your um, switch to your uh, data tab under there, choose the new semantic model or from the uh, Lake House Explorer itself, you would also have the new semantic model experience that would give you that. So my advice, if you want to go and use this option, uh, if you want to go and build a um, Power BI semantic model um, on top of um, your lake house or warehouse is to go and create a customized version because that customized version would give you that experience of enhanced experience of web uh, UI model editor, which is what you usually need for most of your uh, real world scenarios because you will need calculation groups, you will need role level security, you will need hierarchies and many of those things which is not possible in that default uh, semantic model editor. Now the default semantic model editor might get upgraded to that enhanced version at some point. We don't know yet, but as of now, at, at the time of creating this video, uh, there's a big difference. Uh, that is why I would suggest go and create that custom one. Uh, but be careful, creating that custom one and, and using different methods might end up with different options. You might create the import version, you might create a direct query version. If those are what you want, that's all right. But if you want to create a direct lake version, then create it in the method that I explained in this video. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you like this video, go ahead and subscribe into our YouTube channel. Uh, we have weekly videos on Power BI and Fabric. Until the next time, bye.